Hello folks, today is Friday, and instead of uh, talking about video game news, it's pretty quiet right now, so it's the end of the year, 2023 is upon us, we're going to take a look back at some of the biggest gaming news stories of the year. As usual, of course, it's me, Jake Baldino, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We essentially went back and looked at some of the most popular video game news stories uh, from the Friday show, and just general comment sentiments and stuff, uh, just some of the biggest, most exciting stories from the year. And uh, it's fun to look back, because there's a lot of shit we don't even remember happened, because Time flies. We got 10 or so stories to dive into. Uh, we couldn't cover everything though, so if you think there was something missing, uh, we definitely love to hear one of your favorite or one of your stories that you think is the most significant down in the comments. We put this list together a bit with analytics and stuff, but it's, it's good to know what you guys are interested in too. So starting off with the first big story, it is of course Stadia officially closing its doors. Yes, surprising absolutely nobody who has ever followed any Google products whatsoever Stadia is no more. At the time of making this video, it has really wrapped up. Just a few months ago, we got word of it. Uh, came as a complete surprise to many people who worked at Google, but also to many game developers who were working on games exclusively or otherwise just going on the platform. And along with that, they also announced that they would be initiating full refunds for purchases of the Stadia hardware, but also games on the platform. And now, fast forward to the end of the year, uh, those refunds are starting to roll out. Many of you guys who if you were dumb enough like me to buy into it. Uh, <laughs> Damn, son. Damn, I mean, that's a little mean. I mean, hey, we tried it. The tech was cool, right? I don't, okay, I'm sorry. You've been getting those emails that it is rolling out. Uh, your boy personally also just got the email even though it was going to a credit card that I had that is now expired, so I had to redo that, and now it's a mess. But besides the point, it's pretty cool that they are doing that. It seems to me like it's Google trying to keep the goodwill of gamers for maybe something else they're gonna try down the line. Who knows, that's just total armchair speculation on my part, but it's a shame because at the end it did leave behind a small people, uh, a small community that really liked Stadia and used it for very specific scenarios. I put out like a review before we buy video for Stadia and then uh, we put out another one a year later and the service improved and it seems like things were getting better, but unfortunately, it just didn't take. Where does that leave the future of streaming though? I, I don't know for sure. Other companies are still trying stuff. You have Samsung and Xbox getting a little bit creative by using TVs specifically. There's still a lot to figure out with the future of streaming games, but that's where that's at right now with Google, one of the biggest companies with the most money to throw at it. Yeah. Next up, a really big story, honestly, a piece of hardware that people can't get enough news about. It's a Steam Deck. Now, of course, Full disclosure, I'm super biased here because I like the Steam Deck a lot. I've talked about it in videos here on Game Ranks with the Before You Buy, I've talked about it on my channel. I freaking love this device. As a PC gamer, it's really fun to have my library on the go in a good way. I've tested other devices by other companies. Uh, nothing really quite makes sense as much as the Steam Deck. And it's been quite a long road. The Steam Deck released in February of 2022. Of course, there was a huge hubbub about pre-orders and, and that whole thing. And ultimately, it ended up like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X where they're hard to come by and people were scalp scalping them and basically doing whatever we could to get them. And it's been pretty slim, but now, as of the time of making this video, Steam Decks are much more readily available. It seems like Valve has been pretty public about it uh, in terms of them getting in front of hardware production and stuff like that. So now you can actually just go on Steam and order one. For the most point, you're gonna actually get one sometime this century, which is nice. I mean, they've had enough where they were giving one away for free at the Game Awards like every minute or something. So Steam Deck is in full swing if you wanna check it out. Uh, along with that, it's worth pointing out that over the course of the year from February, Valve has been doing a great job updating the thing with really useful software features, listening to feedback, tweaking things, and just adding a lot more value to the device from like customization options, uh, different abilities, more ways to harness the CPU, manage battery life, the screen, stuff like that, organizational stuff. It, it's been really nice to see it really flourish. And as an update too, Valve and, and some people from Valve have actually been talking candidly about uh, updating the device, really just little incremental updates over time, but eventually, because they said it's not going to be a device like an iPhone where there's a new one every year or anything like that, but they did say that it eventually, they are first and foremost going to focus on the battery life and the screen because a lot of people have taken issue with those two things. So it makes sense that those are the next things they're gonna update. Still, either way, like, hey man, the Steam Deck has been a nice device to play with this year. So we thank Valve for that at least. Next up is the news reports that NFTs, at least uh, in the video game world, have kind of 
lost the battle for now. Bloomberg and many sites have kind of cobbled together uh, evidence and stuff speaking to endeavors to get NFTs into modern traditional style video games, not really working out. We've talked about Ubisoft Quartz in the past uh, and basically any announcement around NFTs uh, from the stalker developers kind of talking about a thing to other higher end projects, all kind of were met with universal no thanks. And it does seem like at this point, like a lot of developers in this sector, or at least in our bubble of the gaming world, are listening. Now, uh, it's still worth pointing out that video games are being developed from the ground up to harness crypto and NFT style stuff. But for the time being, for that stuff getting shoved into our regular good old fashioned video games that we come here to talk about, seems like it's not going to be a thing. Everybody has spicy opinions about that stuff, but that's where it's at for now, so let's move on. The next story involves Microsoft announcing that they're intended to acquire Activision Blizzard. Of course, this was a absolute smash of a story that's still ongoing. I'm exhausted talking about this one, because every week it's something about it, like, what are they gonna do with Call of Duty? What are they gonna do with this? Blah, 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 blah. But it's fun to take a look back and really boil it down to that initial announcement. That announcement was, believe it or not, it feels like a million years ago. It was January 18th, 2022. I remember looking at my phone and falling out of bed and running to make a video because it is essentially the biggest acquisition deal or pending acquisition deal in video game history. And pretty freaking up there in terms of all time acquisitions. Microsoft is spending mad money, reportedly 68 billion dollars on Activision Blizzard. They're buying Activision Blizzard and of course getting access to so many things like Call of Duty, everything that entails with that, but then the Activision Blizzard stuff like Overwatch, World of Warcraft, and then of course King, uh, the makers of like the mobile powerhouse giant games that generate tons and tons of money. There's a lot here. And as of right now, that deal is still not finalized. It is going through all the rounds of, uh, you know, antitrust regulator type things, not only in the United States, but across the world. So we've gotten lots of juicy news stories from that. But ultimately, when you boil it down, this is just like a massive, massive corporation gobbling something up to the tune of $70 billion. We've never really seen anything like that in gaming. And that comes with Activision Blizzard, of course, having lots of its own problems that we've talked about in the past from uh, workplace rights issues with employees to problems with leadership. So as of right now, it's still very much a thing in progress, a TBD. A lot of annual analysts and speculators still expect the deal to go through, even despite the pushback or investigations from regulators. But we don't know for sure, so we're just gonna have to wait and see, which is like another one of my catchphrases in these videos. We're just gonna have to wait and see. We've gotta come up with something better than saying that. Probably. Like, hold your damn ho horses. Hold your damn horses. Keep your salt to yourself. Uh, keep your, I don't know. We'll, we'll work on that. Yeah, we'll work on 2023, new, new catchphrase here. Now, in other news, uh, Sony is buying stuff up themselves. Uh, the most interesting thing this year is Bungie. Of course, the creators of stuff like Halo, uh, but the people very much behind Destiny. Now, Bungie has been through the ringer. It's been in a lot of places. I mean, just with Destiny itself. They've been functioning much more independent, of course, with investments and stuff, but they were doing their own thing. And then Sony has now officially acquired them. The ink is actually dry on this deal. It is now official. It seems like it was not as drawn out as something as massive as a $70 billion Microsoft deal because it's essentially one company, one studio. But this was a $3.6 billion deal. And as of right now, from what we've known, from what both Bungie and Sony has said, is that they are owning them, but they are letting Bungie still do their own thing and be creative. This is another thing where we're just gonna have to wait and see how this is really gonna slot into Sony and PlayStation's plans in the future. We have talked about the news story that Sony does plan to kind of double down on their live service style games in their portfolio in the next coming years. So is Bungie really going to be a big cornerstone of that? They've had projects in the works before this Sony deal, and they said that they are still working on those. So I don't know, man, but yeah, still big. Next up, sticking with a story that uh, we, we got a lot of views on these videos. Uh, it's PlayStation reworking the whole PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now thing with PlayStation Plus tiers, uh, just bringing a whole bunch of new value and kind of being reworked somewhat as a competitor to Game Pass, some people would say, but it's a little bit different. As you know, within the last six months, PlayStation has rolled out new tiers of PlayStation Plus with 
different subscription levels where there's like the basic one that gets you the access uh, to one that gives you a sort of library of digital games like a Game Pass or a quote unquote Netflix of games. Uh, and then a higher tiered option that would give you access to a lot of old games. You'd have to stream PlayStation 3 games, but uh, there was a lot of PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 1 games that you could download and play. Now, personally, I want that roster to be updated a little bit more frequently because there's a lot of good stuff that they don't have on there. But for PlayStation fans specifically, it seems like a lot of this was met with decent response. I think some fans just wanted to have something to subscribe to. Seems like it's going well for them, but Sony hasn't said too much publicly, so we're just gonna have to wait and see if they like tweak it more. But as of right now, that was a pretty big change up for this year in terms of game services, if you're on the PlayStation platform. Next up, uh, the big news that CD Projekt Red announced a bunch of stuff. They're working on, you know, a new game, a uh, new cyberpunk style game and Witcher games, uh, but most notably The Witcher 4, officially being a thing. Now, The Witcher 4 isn't the official title, but this year was when we got the full official announcement that it is in the works and a teaser image to go along with it. There's been lots of speculation behind this. Who are we playing as? What Witcher school is this? What's going on? But ultimately, it seems like it's something that we're gonna have to wait quite a while on. CD Projekt Red, as you probably know, has been much busier working on other things, like first of all, fixing Cyberpunk uh, to then the Cyberpunk DLC, which is announced to be coming early 2023. But the next Witcher game and the Witcher franchise seems to be where they're moving elsewhere. Uh, they are, of course, talking about the pre-production very early phases of the next cyberpunk, but I expect to hear some more about the Witcher future sooner. And I'm excited, especially after replaying the Witcher with that new uh, next-gen update they put out. Just more Witcher, please. It's pretty easy. I know people have their reservations about CD Projekt Red now, valid, but Geralt is cool. <laughs> Even if he might not be in the game. Uh, he might not be in The Witcher 4, so. Next up, an absolutely huge Smash story. I can't believe I'm even saying this out loud. Dead Island 2 is finally officially releasing. Yes, the game got a big trailer, a resurgence that it still exists, it's still alive, and it's releasing, as of right now, unless it gets delayed, April 28th, 2023. Now, you might say, Jake, that's not that significant. Who gives a shit? Dead Island? Cool. Well, Dead Island 2 is specific because it was announced back when Dead Island was popular. <laughs> <laughs> it was announced in 2014. That was before I, I think I was kind of doing this here at Game Ranks and like I had went to my first E3 and everything and I had seen prototype footage of the game back when the developers from the first game were kind of working on it and then multiple developers have gone in and out the door over the years and we've barely heard anything and now it's here and it seems like a game where you kill zombies in a tropical setting. Just what... Uh, the doctor dead I orders. guess what the dead doctor the doctor the dying light doctor or whoa <laughs> okay. yeah I'm fine thanks <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see how this shakes up this takes place in like an open world California and it's being developed now finally by damn buster studios and in terms of gaming news stories of course we can't talk about a year without delays there's a lot of video games delayed this year kind of still carrying off the tail of the last two years with the pandemic and just everything D delays are always a thing, but they've been more commonplace. So hopefully they're quieting down, but 2022, we definitely saw a lot. Of course, as you remember, Starfield was delayed. We'll see that in 2023. Skull and Bones was just delayed again and again at this point. Hogwarts Legacy was pushed to 2023. The Lord of the Rings Gollum, we were supposed to see that by now, as well as Sons of the Forest. The Day Before was something that was supposed to release this year, but we still haven't really seen much of that at all, leading a lot of people to be skeptical. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has been delayed. Stalker 2 saw a significant delay because of the conflict in Ukraine. Atomic Heart has also been delayed, and Forspoken. Forspoken seemed like it was gonna be crammed in right amid all the holiday releases that we've been talking about recently, but thank God that was pushed to have its own time later next year. Also, there's a demo out now on PlayStation. I haven't played it yet. Have you played it? Did you download that? Yeah. How is it? It's a lot. <laughs> okay. That's good. So where we are right now, I'm recording this uh, at the end of December and uh, nothing else can get delayed now. That's the law. That's not going to happen. There will be no more delays until 2023. Fingers crossed. Now, the biggest news story, the, the, the most watched, the most clicked of this year, the most talked about with engagement and stuff was, of course, the Grand Theft Auto 6 leak, which seems absolutely immense, a huge thing that seemingly kind of came and went. Rockstar and Take-Two either did a good job brushing this under the rug or the leak just 
to the mainstream public wasn't as big as a deal as we seemingly thought. For me, I thought it was wild. Over an hour of footage, various videos detailing early versions of the game, seeing characters, seeing locations, seeing gameplay mechanics was pretty intense. I think maybe because it was a content dump and not really put together in a small digestible video means it didn't take off as much as uh, some people thought. But like, holy shit, it's a big leak from the biggest game. Grand Theft Auto is the biggest media property in the world. It generates the most money. So obviously the sequel to Grand Theft Auto V is huge. And for a lot of that to just leak out there, is crazy. Rockstar and their parent company did come out and say that this leak uh, did not affect anything internally, security-wise, but also uh, that it's not affecting development. Most significantly, there was news stories about apparently the leaker being a kid, a young teenager from London who did it, and he was arrested, but none of that was ever, I think, officially verified, or it's still ongoing. I couldn't find too much about it, but that doesn't really matter. The fact is, uh, the game has leaked. We've seen bits and pieces of it. As we know right now, uh, you probably saw it, again, legally. Like, I don't want this video taken down, so I can't take too much other than that. Like, I can't say too much other than that. The leaks that we've heard about in the past, the rumors and stuff, a lot of them are confirmed true. Uh, and one of the main characters you play at is actually pretty hot. Am I allowed to say that? There's a whole subreddit dedicated to it. <laughs> About that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that is uh, the gaming news of 2022, or at least the stuff you guys responded to the most. Of course, there's so many other gaming news stories out there, important stuff worth chatting about. So we'd love to hear from you guys in the comments what you're thinking. But I think it goes without saying at this point. Thank you guys for watching. I've said this in a couple of end of the year videos so far, so I hope I don't sound like a broken record, but we genuinely mean it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching throughout 2022, whether you're new this year or you've been around since like the beginning. Thank you. And thank you for yelling at me on social media, on my other YouTube channel, uh, my, my podcast, Friends Per Second. I appreciate you. Everyone here at Game Ranks appreciates you guys for watching. It literally puts food on our table, so cheers for that. Thank you. Happy New Year. Have a great 2023, hopefully. Be safe. I'm Jake Baldino. See you guys next time. Pizza's on me.